You know what's crazy is I still get really nervous when I start a video and I start to get tongue twisted and tongue tied. <laughs> I feel like everyone's just watching me. As soon as I hit the record button, I'm like, everyone's gonna be seeing this. So I get really, really nervous. So welcome back everyone to the Elegant Oxford. It is Sunday night and I'm relaxing at the end of the day and I'm gonna work on a pair of shoes. But I really wanted to make a video for this particular pair. Since I don't get this company in very often, and that company is Gaziano and Girling out of England. And this model is called the St. James Number no. 2. For those who've been watching my channel for a long time, I have featured this shoe before in an older video, but I think I've gotten better at shoe shining since then. At least I think I have. So hopefully this video will be better uh, and the shoes will look better too. And if they don't, I will have failed miserably. They did like he was told. Buffed those shoes to a high mirror shine. For those who don't know, Gaziano and Girling, they're out of... England and they're really popular because they're on Seville Row and they were started by Tony Gaziano and Dean Gerling who were really prolific shoemakers and they came together to start a really amazing company. They've gotten really really popular recently if you go on Instagram and you can check out their shoes. They make some very beautiful and artistic looking shoes. Now these are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. They retail for about $1,200 USD uh, which is a lot. I mean I, the, the shoes I review are usually between 200 and 800 at the top end. Uh, but Gaziano and Girling, along with uh, John Lobb and Edward Green, they're the high-end English shoemakers, and they don't mess around. They make some pretty nice shoes. I know some of you may not like this particular style, which is a chisel toe, but you should check out their other shoes. Gaziano and Girling really does make some amazing shoes. This video isn't sponsored at all. I just, I really wanted to showcase this shoe before I send it back because I don't get them very often. I think when you get into the higher echelon of shoemaking, especially the English shoes, they take a lot of pride in the leather quality, so they do cost a lot, and that's because they select only the best hides, and when you touch a pair of Gaziano and Gerling or John Lobb or Edward Green, you'll immediately notice how uh, premium the leather is. It's only, you know, it's really high-end, super, super soft and malleable, um, but it, it even wrinkles uh, more beautifully, if I can say that, than other companies. Some wrinkles get really deep, and they look really harsh, I've noticed with these shoes, and I've shined you know, a lot, is that a shoe will crease normally because shoes are supposed to crease, they're leather. But when you put a shoe tree in, it pops in beautifully and you can't even feel the crease. It's amazing. And these are, aren't, aren't, I mean, they're slightly used, the shoes, they have some creasing here on the vamp. So I've always enjoyed how premium the leather quality is. And um, if you guys own any pairs of Godsian on Girling, let me know in the comment section. I'd like to hear about it. So I see them on Instagram all the time. Some of their styles are absolutely beautiful. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip these down uh, add a darker burgundy color, and then I'm going to add some burnishing and give them the best mirror shine you've ever seen. And they're gonna go back to their owner and hopefully he'll love them. So let's get started on the video. Okay, so I'm gonna have to tape off the shoe first. Uh, you don't wanna get leather dye on the edges because these are brown. They're actually really smooth and nice. If you get leather dye on these, it's gonna be really hard to take off. So we're gonna wanna use blue painter's tape. This stuff goes on really easily and then comes off just as easily, so just get a little strip, right? Alrighty, just put some in on the edge. You can use your thumbnail or another small tool. Just do that. And we're gonna go all the way around and we're gonna get ready before we take off the laces and start the die. So let's continue. All right, the shoe is all taped off. <laughs> you might actually hear my kids screaming in the background. It's lunchtime, so it's probably unavoidable. This shouldn't take you very long though, uh, unlike the spectators I did last video, which took me about an hour each. It's just the edges, so it should take you about two, three minutes per shoe. Now I have to remove the finish using acetone, and I know it's gonna make some people nervous. It made me very nervous the first time I did it on a thousand dollar pair of shoes, <laughs> but uh, it's gotta be done. So, uh, the toe's already kind of burnished, but we're gonna remove that. So, get the acetone here. You can buy it at, I think I bought this at Home Depot or Lowe's. They sell it in these huge canisters. And I usually wear gloves for this, but here we go. Let's just start removing that finish. And I know it looks really, <clears throat> really ugly right now, but that's just the acetone. When you brush it, it'll look a lot better. That whitening, that whitening effect 
is just the acetone doing its job. And that's the finish that's being removed. It's kind of black here, it's kind of a burnish. But let me show you what happens when you go to the upper area. Here we go. It's gonna immediately lighten. It evaporates in seconds. So acetone really doesn't stick around very long. You can already see that light cherry color right under there, and that's what you want. You want the bare leather. We're not going overboard. We're not going so far that it's tan. Just removing that factory finish so the dye, the leather dye, will cure into the leather. So There we go. This is such high quality leather. It's unbelievable. Okay, here we go. Just like that. Don't be too nervous. Okay. Yeah, this tail area is pretty dark, so we're gonna have to... <clears throat> we're really gonna have to go over it a couple times. And after a while, you should move over to a clean cloth, a clean section on your cloth. Because the it can get pretty dark here, so... There we go. Sounds like an airplane's flying over my house. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but uh, there you go. Let's uh, switch over. Whew, I've used this rag a lot. Let's see, here we go. This is a clean section right here. We'll get some more acetone. Okay, and we'll keep on going. There we go. Yeah, that whitening effect is the acetone, so don't get too nervous. Okay, and brush the area. You'll notice it'll just... There we go. It'll just look a lot better. But we're not done yet, so we're going to have to keep removing it and head off to the entire shoe. Okay, so I have the door open to get some fresh air in, so sorry if it's a little bit louder, but I'm gonna start the leather dye process. I'm actually gonna go a different route than I thought. I actually like these, this lighter pink color, so I'm gonna put burgundy dye in my uh, airbrush, and then I'm going to add, start adding the reds in first, and then use the blacks afterward, but the reds, are going to cover the shoe, but I'm going to leave some slight highlighted areas um, for a dynamic look, and then when I shine the shoe, it'll all blend a lot better, so bear with me as I, as I actually <laughs> do this. It might look a little ugly at first. So let's get started, and uh, I'll keep you updated as I add the leather dye. I'll have my mask on, so sorry if it sounds a little muffled, but uh, here we go. Let me sit down. Alrighty. There we go. So essentially, I'm just shading everything in, like I'm shading a circle on a piece of paper with a pencil to make it look 3D. I'm kind of doing that with the airbrush using burgundy so it looks more dynamic. Back and forth. Remember, you can move your hand backward to give yourself a, a better shading effect. The closer you are, the more precise it's going to be. So move your hand back and spray from afar to cover more ground. And It's a skill you got to learn just like using a brush. Believe it or not, I know some people don't believe that, but here we go. Okay, so, uh, let me sit down here. All right, so I, I used burgundy dye, and I left these areas right here and right here, uh, kind of as a highlighted area, some of it right here. 
and I haven't used black at all. I know it looks pretty dark, but you can use different colors to add some really strong shading, which is kind of what I want. And then I'm going to use a little bit of black just to accentuate those areas and uh, really get what I want. I'm going to actually add some more red here, some more burgundy, and kind of even it up. But this is just a, a step to show you the progress so far. And once they're shined, they're going to look a lot better, and you're going to all see it come together perfectly. Okay, here's the difference between both shoes. Okay, so this area is still the same underneath. Let that school bus pass, and uh, you'll see that I'm just flavoring the shoes. I'm putting a little bit of a spin on them using shading and color, just two colors, except I'm going darker and and uh, using shading, using that color to kind of give it a dynamic look. Remember, with airbrush, the closer you go, the darker it'll be because you're really concentrating, and the further away, it really sprays it out. The cone gets wider, and it it uh, makes it a little bit lighter, spreads it out more evenly. So let's get to the next shoe. Okay, we're making pretty good progress. So, so far I've only used burgundy, but as you can see, I've shaded in these areas correctly, and it looks a lot darker than this area right here and this area up here, which is exactly what I want. But once I come in with the black, it's really gonna, you know, make that juxtaposition between red, burgundy, and black more apparent, and that's what I'm looking for. So shading, uh, using that artistic eye to make sure it looks right. So I'm shading along the contours and uh, hopefully it looks good to you. I mean, I'm pretty happy where it's coming out so far. I'm not going to use a lot of black, but I am going to kiss and make sure that everything looks properly shaded. And then we can get to shining the shoe. So let's get ready with the black first. Okay, so the shoes are all done, and now I'm going to condition, add some pigment, and also shine the shoes using colored shoe cream. Now my favorite is from the MDO line. You can use probably three colors here. You can use burgundy. It's called Bordeaux number eight. It's a, it's a good color. It actually looks pretty purple, but it goes on pretty burgundy. But it's probably not the best color for this shoe, but you can use it, and it's going to look really, really great. Then there's my personal favorite, which is Hermes Red, number 12. It's really a deep, rich, oxblood color. My absolute favorite. Really goes great with these burgundy oxblood shoes. And then there is the brand new Actual Red. So this one's 11, num red, straight red, nothing different, nothing special about it. But I'm happy because MDO is finally releasing different colors. The BDC line, which is the less expensive line, there's over 90 plus colors. I sell them all. There's like lime green and hot pink. Anything you can think of, it's in the BDC line. Uh, although it doesn't condition as well and the pigment isn't as strong, uh, the MDO line is releasing new colors, which is red, uh, oatmeal, steel gray, other, other colors. So this one's actually gonna be really good for these light areas. Uh, use less than you think and rub it in with your fingers and it's going to look really, really great. And uh, we also have, this I'm really happy about, a matching red wax, which I'm super, super excited about. I always like using a light colored wax when I'm mirror shining a patina with a shoe with a patina. So instead of using black or anything like that, I'm going to be using red, the light color, and it blends everything really perfectly. So that I'm really, really happy about. So let me just show you right away. We get a little bit of red. And you're gonna use a lot less than you think, okay? You can even get some from the cap right on your finger. It's really, really rich, right? Just add a, a little tiny bit and then just rub it in, okay? Take your time. Don't use a lot. That's why I don't recommend you use a, a shine rag or a, an applicator. Just shine just like that, a little tiny bit at a time. And you'll notice how how much pigment these 
MDO creams have. I'm not kidding. Try it out. Just try it out once, and I guarantee you're going to be really impressed how much pigment they have and how easily they go right in and, and condition the leather, and then how well they shine with just one quick brush and one application. Haven't found one product that does all three just as well, so I'm a big fan of MDO. I got some here inside the... Uh, you can hear my baby crying in the background. <laughs> it's bedtime, so they always get really, really ornery around this time. They don't want to go to bed. So you're probably going to hear my son or my daughter yelling, which is okay. They're just little kids. Now, yeah, see, my fingers are completely red now. Let me find my brush real quick. Now, if you get some cream in the holes, just dab it out. You should be completely fine. Okay, just apply some there, and then you can apply some here in these lighter areas. It really just does a fantastic job. You know, I forgot some black. If you want to use a little bit of black around here, just take your time and condition the entire shoe, and uh, you'll be all set. So, I recommend you use your fingers, and then after you just wash your fingers, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, so I'm going to condition the rest of the shoe, and then we're going to apply the mirror shine, and we'll be all done. Alrighty. Let's uh, brush this one off. Just one quick application and a brush. You'll immediately notice it's looking a lot better. We actually stand up. I'm telling you, there's nothing like MDO cream. It just shines so well with one application. Really fantastic. Now we get started on the mirror shine. There's that wax. Gosh, there's nothing like touching brand new wax, I'm telling you. Okay, so we're going to, as always, add sequential layers to the toe cap. And I'm going to add like 10 to 15, okay? The brand new wax has so many solvents in it, it just applies so easily. I love it. It's going to make for a beautiful mirror shine guaranteed. Wax already has just not very much pigment anyway, but the lighter the better, as long as it's colored, maybe not neutral, but colored cream. It's really going to make a difference, but the red is going to blend the black and the burgundy perfectly, so it's going to keep adding layers. I wonder if you can see how good this wax looks. I took off the tape. Just looks and feels so good. So, I got some all over my fingers. I'm just gonna keep applying it. It's really more of a, Pat Deluxe is more of a wet wax, while Mirror Gloss is drier. And Mirror Gloss shines faster, but I think Pat Deluxe in the end gives the best shine. We're just going to keep adding layers, more than you think, till it's all covered. Then we can start the mirror shine. It's kind of a tedious process, to be honest, but it's worth it. Just keep going back and forth, like always. You're going to be set. All right. Now, when you get to this exact point, I have about, I'd say, 20 to 30 layers on here. You don't need to put that many. I personally like to do that. It just makes the job easier for me. But you may not even have to do it this way. You can do it the traditional way. I just found that this kind of puts a barrier of, lubric of lubrication so that I don't accidentally pull off 
wax or pull off a leather dye or anything like that. So once you get to this point, find a clean part of your rag, right? Clean part, because you're starting to shine new. If you have a rag that's pretty used, you might have to find another section or get another rag. So it has to be pretty clean. Okay, just like that, you're gonna get your alcohol water solution. Just wet it a tiny, tiny bit, just like that. Make sure it's not too wet, too oversaturated. And then we're gonna start, okay? So just start to buff. And this rubbing alcohol in water is really gonna lubricate the process and start to melt those waxes down. And you touch the wax just a tiny bit. So why I like Pack Deluxe so much over Mirror Gloss, even though Mirror Gloss is fantastic, Pat Deluxe just has more solvents and it just keeps the whole process lubricated. And the shine comes through really, really, really quickly. Okay. Now if you need more help, you can watch my dedicated guaranteed shine mirror shine tutorial. Not perfect at all, but we're already getting a mirror shine to come through. It's really that simple. I'll be honest, uh, Gatiano and Girling always shine very quickly. Some leathers don't cooperate and shine as quickly, but this is just what you get when you mess with high quality leathers. And the wax is all on there. You've done the work previously by putting down those 30 layers or more. And you're just buffing it and adding more wax. And you're honestly, realistically going to do this for a while. And you add a drop of water. The second it feels rough to the touch, add a lubrication of some kind, either wax or a water drop. Because if you don't, you're going to start to pull off wax. It's going to get too dry, so you want it to feel like it's gliding the entire time. Okay? Back and forth. Back and forth. Simple as usual. There you go. Alright, before I reveal the shoes, I have a special discount for all of you. As many of you know, Cobbler Union is having their winter sale until the end of February, which is their largest sale of the year. There are a ton of models discounted for the entire month of February, both best sellers and last call models, with free shipping and free returns for any sale models too. To add to this sale, I have a special extra 10% off code for my viewers that stacks on top of any sale or non-sale shoe as well for those who want it. The code is ELEGANTCOBBLER10. This code allows you to get some amazing sale pairs for under $250. I've already reviewed three of their pairs and I highly recommend Cobbler Union. So remember, the coupon stacks on top of the current sale, so it's an extra 10% off any sale or non-sale item. I'm not making any money off of this at all, it's just a helpful code to give back to fans of Cobbler Union and the Elegant Oxford. Hope it helps. Now, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I just absolutely love how these came out. It's so pleasing to see your hard work pay off, and uh, I'll be honest, it's Gatiano and Girling. They deserve the credit. Their, their shoes are just fantastic, and the leather really cooperates every time. Sometimes working on shoes can be so frustrating, and then when it comes all to, comes together in the end, it's just really pleasing, and it's such a relief. So hopefully you like the shoes. I think they shined so well. I even got a nice shine on the heel. So I hope you like them. And I hope that Cobbler Union discount code helped you as well. It's 10% off even sale prices. So hopefully that works for you. Also, visit theelegantoxford.com to purchase any of the items you saw me use today. Um, it helps support the channel. And I really appreciate all you guys going over and, and buying stuff from the online store. Thanks again. Uh, like, subscribe, share, and, and uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me if you liked what I did. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.